to begin today, we're uh, going to, I'm going to ask Karen Anderson, uh, Karen and Joe, yep. uh, her husband, are um, going to share with us, uh, Karen's going to share with us a witness and its culmination in her relationship with her Blessed Mother. Next week, we are going to partake of um, a statue of Our Lady of Fatima that will travel around our homes for a couple weeks at a time, and we'll have um, some things in it to help us grow in our relationship with Mary and with each other and with God. Uh, I'll let Karen um, explain things from there. But next weekend will be an opportunity to sign up to be a family that receives this, and I've asked that she would introduce it to us um, in a way that could help us pray about whether we would like, whether you would like to partake of this. Hi, um, like you said, my name is Karen Anderson and I, I live here in, in Harrisburg. So, um, actually a lot of my talk is on discernment. And the only way I can talk in front of people is to somehow find a connection of something maybe you've seen and what's in your life that involves all of us in my life. So um, this is two very strange questions, but has, well, anyone played the game Battleship? Okay. All right. Has anyone seen the movie Battleship? Okay. So in, in Battleship, there is a lot of um, discernment. What I mean by this is um, we have a lot of boards that we play Battleship through our life, uh, whether we're really busy, whether we're discerning somebody who's passed away, a loved one, whether our children are sick. We open up the board, and we don't always see what's on the other side. We know that those ships are placed, but God gives us God gives us the game. God gives us the battleship. And we're on the other side, and we have our forces, and we're trying to figure out what's the number to call just to connect to God. So, um, so I'm going to tell you my discernment. So I, I got, um, when we first moved to, Falls, or to Harrisburg, we really wanted to get that Catholic church. And then we got involved in Holy Spirit. And I really got involved. And I love it. I love Holy Spirit. So Joe kept bringing up to me, my husband Joe, he said, you know, Harrisburg's starting the community church, you know, we got to get involved. So what do I do when I have conflict? Uh, I ignore it. And, and yeah, Joe, uh, let, me go, let me go do the wash here. Yep, yep. Uh, Karen, but aren't you, you know, you sh we should really talk this over. Uh, no. So on a Sunday morning, he says to me, uh, Karen, I don't know where you're going, but I'm going to Harrisburg Community Church. And you know what? After ignoring my um, battleship board, all of a sudden God's going, here you go. Here's your board. And my husband hit the tugboat. So I'm putting a peg in my tugboat. And I'm like, okay, just go to church. You know, it'll all be good. So the first Mass that we went to was, um, it was when everybody had already set up the rectory. And uh, Father was, you know, hey, thank you. Thank you guys for, you know, coming to the rectory. And I think the gal even <laughs> got up and told her testimony. And I'm not there. I'm standing there. I, I know the people that are involved in church, and I'm behind. And I didn't help with the rectory. And now, what do you think that did to my tugboat? I went home, I put the peg on, I went, there goes my tugboat. But I always have a really solid base, so I thought, okay, well, you know, a couple weeks go by, and I thought, just could be a baby. Suck it up. Sign up. You know, you can always do what you want to do at Holy Spirit, and you can, you can come here. No problem. So, so I thought, I'll be the one to sign it. Uh, I put my name down or email, and I'm half-hearted. So I went home, and I thought, yeah, I get to close the old battleship board. I know. No, you know how Javanji, the, the game Javani, when you can't close a board, but you're in the game, and you're like, why can't I get this board to close? 
because I wasn't quite there. I didn't, I wasn't connected, you know? I thought that if I put that peg on the other side of the board, here, here you go, God, I'm, I'm here, but I'm not there. So um, time goes on, and um, I belong to the choir over at Holy Spirit. And um, I, I, get in the, I get a text, and are you coming? Yep. I get there, and they say, well, where have you been? Okay, well, what do you mean, where have I been? Well, you, you didn't show up the last couple of times. I go, well, but, but I didn't get an email. Well, we, you know, we were just wondering where you were at. So I missed choir at Holy Spirit, and I thought, well, where's my email? And so then I found out, like, and I didn't know how it went if you signed your name up at another church. I thought, how does that go? Do you, does communication get a little dropped or what? So I thought, okay, I can MacGyver this. Uh, choirs every, every other week, second week, last week of the month. I can have Elizabeth just um, send me a note if something's different. No problem. So then I get to the end. Um, can you see where the ship is sinking? I'm putting kind of pegs on my on my ships, you know, so, so then um, I'm in the back of uh, Holy Spirit, and Marge comes up to me, and she is, she's on the list of saying the rosary, leading rosary, and I'm on that, she said, hey, are you going to do the rosary? I go, well, what do you mean? Well, you're not on the list. I go, well, what do you mean I'm not on the list? And she, and I'm like, okay. Now, Mary has, I so in with Mary because you know when I am do the leading rosary I mean I say it and I don't wander because every time I do the rosary I'm like gee I wonder what's we're gonna have for supper you know I can do that at the same time while I'm saying all the words but that is my key time that I can totally focus in on Mary so that one hit my big liner you know the one that has all the pegs and now I'm like oh I mean, I land my plane on that, that liner, and that's, that's Mary to me, you know. So I thought, okay. So, and still moving on, I do catechism, and my daughter decided to do catechism with me. I mean, that's big. She's 24 years old. I'm like, let's just rope her into this, yeah, you know. And she was willing. So I thought, what am I going to do if I don't have communication? Are they going to send it by email this year and I'm not going to get it? Because stewardships are coming up and I need to sign. You know, am I, am, I going to, am I going to be able to show her that everything just has a great flow? You know, and I knew the room. It was, I've done it for years. It's hard for me to change. And so I went back to the office and I said, hey, you know, um, I'm not getting information. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm sinking here, you know. So I said, you know what? Sign me back up with Holy Spirit. Just, just sign me back up. i, I got to be planted. And so she signs me up, and then right after that, she turns around. She says, well, let's just verify your email. She verified my email, and it was gmail.com. I'm hotmail.com. So somewhere along the line, when they were updating the emails, they accidentally dropped me because they put in the wrong email. And it was quite ironic how it was all coming around the same time when I was trying to figure out where I was placed over here in Harrisburg. So, back to the movie of Battleship. In the movie of Battleship, it's this, your, um, there's this gentleman who was the, he was co-captain you have your lines, and he would eventually become captain. He has his forces. I mean, what they're, what they're um, battling against is these aliens that you can't see because they're camouflaged. Just like in the board, you can't see what's on the other side. So um, the, uh, the co-captain, they're fighting. My, my, just like me, my battle's going down. My ships are going down. All the ships are gone. Guess who steps up is this young man. Well, this man, young man thought that everything he could do, he could do on his own. He kind of thought, I don't need my connections. I can figure this out. I can MacGyver everything. 
that does not make the people that he's with, his team, really feel like you're together. So he steps up as captain. All of a sudden, he has his co-captain, and, and they give him a, a new ship. It's an old ship, and he's got to figure out how to run it. He can't run his own ship without the help of the other people because they know how this ship works. So he's up. It's it's he, this uh, co-captain that's with him that steps up with them, kind of leans over and he says, "You know, we have an old way of doing things. Let's go back to old school. Let's get connected." So he says, "What you do is there's uh, buoys. You light them up, and if something comes close, it's a connection, and we know where that ship's at." and we can take that ship down. So, back to my board. So I got to thinking, I, I need a connection. I can't keep doing this back and forth thing and feeling uncomfortable. Um, so I brought it up to, um, I belong to the Legions of Mary. They said, you know, we need to get this statue around, bring it to, uh, to people's homes, and just get people involved in their faith. And I thought, well, how about if we bring it to Harrisburg? And I'm like, okay. I'm thinking, now why did I say that? I feel a little bit not there, but I thought, okay. So this would then lead me to talking to Father Retton. And I'm going, well, that's going to be kind of hard because, you know, I'm really not with Holy Spirit. I wonder why I think I bet he knows that I, that I actually signed up and now I bowed out, you know. So I kind of, I called him up, and I kind of drug my feet a little bit, but I came in and I talked to him. And that's when my board got lit up. Because he said to me, you know, look at, we're talking. We got a connection. Okay? So, a little light up, and then, and then he kind of, he, he, he does a lateral move on me that kind of exposes me a little bit. And just like in the movie, back to the movie, there's the part where now they're all working together, they gotta drop this anchor. They gotta turn the boat around to miss the aliens shooting at them. They know where they're at. So they gotta levy the boat around, drop the anchor, hey, you do this, quick turn, and now, whew, missed it. But now I'm exposed this way. What does Father say to me? He says, hey, why don't you talk to people about your discernment? Yeah, and just like that boat, I'm going, no, I'm turning, no, you know. But how this all relates to Mary is when I end up, okay, God gives me the board. He puts our discernments in front of us. We have to connect to it. We may not like what's in front of us, but when we connect, it's so much easier, okay? So Jesus knows that I make a whole bunch of sins. And so I have pretty much felt like I've alienated myself away from Harrisburg, and I am loaded with sins. And Jesus is my best friend. So I go to him to try to maneuver all my pegs to get on the other side of the board. But Mary, if I sin a lot... Mary is my ultimate go-to person because half the time I don't even know what my discernment is, but if I say the rosary, I don't even know why I say the words repetitive, I feel at peace. And she puts me so much at peace. She is like, if I, if I, if I get in conflict with Joe, it's like, ugh, and I'm like, just talk to me. She's a girl. She knows that all my battle, my, my have a tons as we all do. I'm busy here. I've got my boards. And she's, I just figure if I say the rosary, that just covers it all. So I like having her in my life. I need her for not only just my forgiveness, because she's my go-to person. So back to now, after that board got lit up, there were several things that happened. One of the gals that I used to do catechism with, she's here at Harrisburg, we got to meet, and we talked. 
And that week I had a Bible class, and I, it was on Little Therese, and there's this little saying, when I am abandoned, I know he puts me here. And at the very end of the week, another friend of mine, I just spilled the guts to her, same story. She said, oh, I totally get that. She said, wait, I'm sorry. I really like when people say, I'm sorry, because they get it. They know my discernment. They get it. I'm sorry. And then she said, you know what? My family has been with, with the cathedral for 100 years. And I had to pull myself away from where my roots were, where my home was. I lived next to the cathedral. It was just like I was right there. And now I'm over at Holy Spirit. And that's when I thought, that puts me at peace. And she said, you know what? I do everything everywhere. I go here and help. I go there and help. I, it's all one church, you know. And so that brought me to this moment right here. So you guys all have your, your games or your battleship games. They're all open. Nobody knows your own discernments. You know, um, sometimes we think the only one that cares is just ourselves. Sometimes we think we've exposed something, but we haven't, and people are looking at us. But I know that even though I can't close the doors on all my discernments, my boat's still there, and my boat still floats. And so, if anything you can get out of this, either you really like, go watch the movie Battleship, or just know that within your discernments, within the Catholic faith, we have a lot of help. Thanks. Thank you, Karen. One of the things that uh, sticks with me Uh, that it's, it can seem like it isn't, we can think it has to be a logical thing, like this happens, this happens, I do this, I do this, but to recognize that God just chose a woman. All he wanted was one yes from this young lady, and the whole world began a process. And do we really believe that that's possible in our own lives, that somehow Mary was a way for her to say yes, for her, uh, and that this whole thing sort of opens up because of it. And so we all have things in our lives that we're looking for guidance on. And to really just pray that Our Lady might help us. Uh, that saying yes to her is saying yes to a path that leads us to Christ. And um, uh, my favorite prayer or sort of devotion to our Blessed Mother is Lady, Our Lady Untire of Knots. Right? I think it's like the modern devotion. Everybody, I think, feels tied and like, rah. Simple prayer, there's a little space you have that you just say what it is you want. And so we'll have those prayers inside the box. We'll have different ways in which the kids can color and can do stuff. Uh, it'll be a really friendly box. Uh, Mary is friendly. Um, for people that do pray, that don't pray, that are used to this, aren't used to this, and it'll be pretty diverse. And to really even believe that just saying yes to this and having it in your home can bring about a grace. Because our, our Blessed Mother... Uh, has done that now for 2,000 years. So uh, we look forward to having that as a part of our mission and a part of our parish. Our witness for today is Brianna Stearns. I'll let her take the show, but I think to begin, if we can start with where we were last week, that the human person right, is an embodied soul. So they have a material and a spiritual. And this prepares us for the gift of the incarnation and that the newness that every human being is looking for is going to come through a person. Right? So I've uh, been journeying with Brianna and John and the family for my time as a pastor at Holy Spirit or at uh, St. Lambert. <laughs> Um, and then there was sort of a despair when they were leaving to go to Harrisburg and I'm like, no! <laughs> and then I ended up coming to Harrisburg. <laughs> <laughs> so as Father said, I'm Brianna Stearns, my husband John, and then we've got four kids and one on the way we're due at the end of May. And Father had asked me to talk, he and I, uh, I'm trying to think how to put this, he and I had a a friend of mine who became a friend of his. And so I'm a cradle Catholic. 
Um, grew up in Sioux Falls, received all my sacraments from baptism to marriage at St. Lambert. And then um, all four of our kids were baptized at St. Lambert. And then fast forward to about 2015, I work at an OBGYN clinic. I'm an RN there. And we hired a new scheduler. And Dr. Gates, whom I work for, is Catholic, and I'm Catholic, so we share that. It's also a Catholic facility. So over the course of time, we asked Stacy, you know, was she Catholic? What was her background, et cetera? And she said she was Catholic, but not practicing for 20-some years because she got pregnant in high school. And then decided, you know, to talk to the priest about could they get married at the church, and that was a no-no at that time. Not acceptable, so she just felt like they're saying, no, we can't do that. So they got married outside the church. They had two girls and then just lived their whole life not at all involved with the church because they were told no and that was their answer. And so over the course of time, I would say like, well, if you want to go to St. Lambert, we're going on Sunday at 930. And then she would say, I don't think so. So probably over eight months we did this. Like every Friday I'd say, we're going on Saturday at 430 or we're going on Sunday at this time if you want to join us. It was kind of over Christmas, maybe Christmas, January, she was having some hardships with her family, like her family's a little bit broken, and so she thought, maybe I should go to church. Well, I'll talk to Brianna about it. So I said, well, you can come. We're going at 9.30. Nope, I'm still not going. I'm still not quite there. So every single Friday, I'd give her the invitation, and um, one Friday she said, okay, I'll go, but I'm sure the pew will burn. And I was like, I don't think it's going to burn. I think you're going to be okay. And she's like, but you can't just go back. And I was like, yeah, you can. But I didn't, I didn't have a concept. Like she's like 15 years older than me. Like I didn't know that time of the church. And I was like, you can just come. Father, will, you can talk to Father. I don't know. And I was like, no, just come with us. So she and her husband, maybe his mom, I think, and his mom um, all met us at St. Lambert and we went to Mass. And Father John happened to see that somebody different was with the Stearnses. And so he made a point to grab them after church and just introduce himself and say hi and um, he didn't he didn't know her story and she didn't know him and he was like yeah you can get back in the church let's go and he like took him let him down the hall went to the office and got him set up to do I don't even know all the stuff that you met with him but he met with them and then they got their marriage blessed in the church and so John and I and the kids were able to be a part of that and then since then, her niece has come back to the church, and her girls are kind of wavering in, like, is that what they're going to do or not do? But it was just a simple request of me every week. Would you like to come to Mass? Would you like to come to Mass? And I, obviously God put it on my heart to ask her that because she said no every time, I mean, until finally the last time. And so that was, then we were talking about it kind of looking back. So, like, that was in 2015 when I started making the offer 2016 is when she joined the church May of 2016 and then I was saying her they were from Aberdeen that's where she had lived and she had a daughter that played soccer and I was like well I went to Aberdeen for a soccer game only one time with one of my friends and I said I should look at the pictures maybe you're there it was like this big banquet thing and so we pulled out the pictures and I only had like three pictures from that whole time and she and her husband are in the back of my picture like at the soccer game and they're sitting there and she's like who knew that 10 years ago God put you in my life because he knew it took me 10 years to get here so he's like I'll just drop her in here and then I'll bring her back later so we still joke about that how we actually saw each other and I have a picture of her from 2006 but we never knew so that's kind of a fun story and so now she's active at St. Lambert while she and her husband so that's exciting and then I have told father since that time one of my coworkers, um, her mom had passed away, so I went to the visitation, and I didn't know if my coworker was Catholic or not. I just went to the visitation at a funeral home, and as I was getting ready to leave, I saw a priest come in, and I was like, I wonder if she's Catholic. She's never talked about it. I, I don't know where she goes to church, but I probably should ask her. So then it kept weighing on me, like, you need to ask her, you need to ask her. And so weeks later, I went into her office and asked her, are you Catholic? And she said, I said, I, I noticed the priest at your mom's visitation. And she goes, uh, well, I'm disqualified. And I was like, disqualified? What does that even mean? <laughs> so she said that she was raised Catholic, and then she got married to a non-Catholic in a non-Catholic church. So she became disqualified. And these are her terms. So she became disqualified, and then 
did most of her time, her married time, going to this non-Catholic church. So I said, do you guys still go to church there? And she's like, well, that's a really hard question. So let's just say yes. And I was like, okay. And I said, well, I know we don't live that far from Harrisburg. So if you want to check this out, I told her the mass times and what, and I said, if you want, like, you can come, come meet Father John, etc. So she hasn't been here yet and hard to say if she ever will, but I felt like that was kind of like a repeat of my friend Stacy was like, well, now, now it's my turn for her. And then one last little piece that Father asked me to share. I went to the women's Lenten retreat on Tuesday and there was a gal there and I was like, I think I'm supposed to meet her. I don't know why I didn't know why I've never seen her before. So everyone like came through the line and I was serving brownies. <coughs> So I was the very last person, and I was like, I don't know where I'm going to sit, like, just thinking, you know, I don't know what's going to be open or who I'm going to sit by when I go out there. And there was one chair, and it was right next to that person that I was like, I think I'm supposed to meet her. So then I ended up meeting her and getting to know her a little bit better. So just some things, like, I just live my everyday life, and then God plants these things for me, and then I share them with others. So thank you. Thank you. She was nervous about speaking. She did great. <laughs> uh, a couple of things that I want to illuminate with all of this is uh, as, as you take this path forward, it opens up more. So you can see, like, okay, so this one thing happens to her, it takes a certain amount of time, and then all of a sudden it happens again. But it takes less time, all of a sudden it happens again, right? And so the more you take the path, the more you grow aware of how it is that God works. And then you can also grow an awareness of saying, wow, this seems to be something God's doing through me. Right? Maybe not everybody, well, everybody doesn't have the same charism. Right? So some people have a particular way in which the Spirit wants to use them. St. Paul says we're all one body but many parts. Okay? So maybe somebody isn't the one who brings a lot of people into the church, but you're the one who has this ability to... Um, I don't know, you know, do different trinkets and things and uh, be really crafty. And um, I was with somebody yesterday and they are a woodworker and um, made me think of this man, Pete Kurth, who makes little crosses for people who go to the hospital. You know, I don't know. God has different ways. But you can see God's using me in this way. I'm not, like, trying. This is just happening. I'm following. Uh, and so with Rihanna, this simplicity that it wouldn't have happened without her. And it's really amazing to see Jeff and Stacy. Like, their family is, it's just beautiful. To see them every Sunday at Mass when I would go there, you come in the back and then there, and I'd see them sitting in the pew and I would just like erupt with joy. Right? I can't believe they're sitting here. I didn't do this. Right? They're not here this morning because of me. And I'm like, well, they kind of are, though, here because of me, because I was in the hallway. And, but it's not because of me, because if it wasn't for Brianna, they wouldn't have been here. And then is it because of Brianna? Well, she asked her a lot of times, and then this time she asked, right? And what do you grow? You grow in realizing there's something divine being communicated. There's something of the Holy Spirit that's actually, like, moving, but it's using us. An important dimension that I think connects a number of things that we have talked about with Brianna and Stacy. Uh, she asked, right? She asked. She asked. She asked, right? Okay. There's, there's an awareness that Brianna knows that th something is coming from within her, right? It's a really important dimension that it's not, Brianna isn't out there saving the world. Brianna's out there trying to answer to the Savior who is moving there, right? So she's being faithful. She isn't out doing a bunch of work. She's being faithful to this movement that she has. As she does this, what's the point, she said it, what's the point with which she says yes finally? Stacy, right? So Stacy's here, Stacy. When does Stacy say yes finally? Bob, can you say more? Well, she kind of hit rock bottom. Something happened. I started to tell a story about her life. She said I need to do something. 
right? And, and the, reason, the reason we pay attention to these things is because uh, as we watch and as we follow ourselves and look at what really happens, we can be more faithful to the way God makes it happen. And then we have more confidence to live it out there because we can see how it really happens. It's reasonable to us. We're not just throwing darts in the dark. No, we're like in the dark, but with this light that not everybody has. And we know that we have this light. Uh, and then as it becomes more effective and we can see it works, we know how to be more faithful to it as it happens. Okay? So she had a need. She became aware of a need. This is why they always will say, um, you know what they say, uh, you know, the bottom of the bottle or the bottom of the barrel or, you know, big profound conversion stories always come from that. Is it necessary that we all have, you know, trips to the treatment center before we meet Jesus? Right? So before you become Catholic, before you become a Christian, here's a, a pass. You get 30 days in the Canton Hotel. That's what I call Keystone. Was I spent 30 days in the Canton Hotel. Is that necessary? Can anyone prove to me that it's not necessary by something in your own life? You seem to be answering the questions, Don. <laughs> well, I was thinking that I didn't have to go treat it, you know? Like, like Brianna, my sister-in-law, has worked with our CIA, and she was becoming a she grew up Catholic, and, you know? So, yeah. What's some church with me on Sunday? I went to see what should be there. I went to the cathedral. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, wow. Well, this is where I need to be. Okay. Did you hear that little tiny sentence? This is where I need to be. It's not that we all have to go to the bottom of the barrels. The problem is we don't recognize we're created with a need. Right? It's only in recognizing this need that is like, oh, that the answer sort of drops into us. And so here Don finds this answer that he almost didn't even recognize he had a need for. <coughs> and why is this a beautiful place? Because when that happens, it comes through the person, but when the desire and the need happen, it's a path that the other person takes for themselves. So then it's not me having to push them all along the path. Stacy and Jeff are there without you checking in. <laughs> it's amazing. And isn't it amazing that here both of us are in Harrisburg now and they're still there? Why? Because as they paid attention to us, they realized that what it was that was answering their need was the Lord. Was Christ, who was this presence, this spirit among these people. And so when they went there, they recognized, ah, this is where I belong. This is what answers my need. Right? And they recognized, my gosh, what if Brianna hadn't been in my life? There's no way to take Brianna out. <coughs> That's Christianity. There's no way to take that the person was the instrument. There's no way to take that I was there. Right? And all that happened, it's even more incredible as time passes. I'm between masses, right? We had like three masses there, and uh, once in a while somebody else would help with the mass, and I happened to be in the entryway between the mass. So I was the one saying, I was the priest at the place, and I recognized they were there, okay? There's a point, recognize, to observe, I'm aware, I don't know these people, but I know them. I happen to be in this entryway, not intending, and here they come. Just like Brianna was saying, like, I think I need to talk to this person, right? I don't have to go over to the table and kick the kid out that's next to her. I'm supposed to sit right here. How many of us can do it? I mean, this is like me, too. Like, I force my way into a place because I think that's the answer. No, first comes the desire, but sometimes there's some other way that it comes about. But if I come out and the seat's open, oh, my God. Right? So it was like this. They just came. I was like, I wonder who those people are. And then I'm standing in the entryway, and here they are. Oh, hi, I'm Father John. Who are you? And then they said something about, I don't know how it happened, but this was the key that, that provoked it. I said, oh, uh, um, 
I, you know, welcome to St. Lambert and, and, oh, come in here, I'll get your email. What I've realized is it's important for me to get some sort of way to communicate with them immediately when the event happens. Because when the event happens, when the need arises, when whatever that is, we're more willing. But if I don't do it then, later on, all kinds of fears come up, all kinds of questions like Karen was saying about the battleship. I start evaluating by myself, you know, and then it's like monumental to get over that. But if I have the information, then I just send and say, hey, it was great to meet you, da 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 and then they're like, oh, yeah, okay, and then it's like they're caught. You know, I, I'm a good fisherman, <laughs> right? Know when to set the hook. <laughs> we welcome, were you there when she came into the office? Were you with us when that happened? Well, we went to the office and then left. Okay, so then they leave. She comes into the office at St. Lambert. I remember it. She's writing it down, and I look up at her, and she's weeping. And she says, Father, it's been 20 years or 30 years. It's been 30 years since someone has welcomed me into the Catholic Church. That's it. That's all I did. I just was going to ask her for an email address. I had no idea the need that was there. But the minute I saw the need, I was faithful to it. This is Christianity. The work is being obedient to something that happens that's not of this world. But it happens in a real way, and so I can be faithful to this person. Right? So email, let's get together. And the other dynamic to it is, it's not as if there are no rules. It's not as if there's nothing, you know, oh, everything's great, you don't have to worry about anything. No, there's like all kinds of different dynamics that sometimes can go into this, you know? It opens up issues of annulments, it opens up issues of uh, uh, whether you really want to be Catholic or not, it opens up a lot of different things. But why do people stay faithful in it? Because they've met a person. Right? They've met a person who somehow is an instrument of something and they, when they stay faithful to it, then you just walk them through, here's, here's what, where you're at, here's what's going on, here's the different dynamics. And there's, they were, uh, didn't have their marriage blessed in the church. And there was, wasn't really anything else, so we had their marriage blessed in the church. You know, took them a little bit of time. I had one couple that was really old, and uh, I asked some priest, okay, like, if they're really young, you gotta do some marriage prep. They gotta understand the sacrament. They gotta understand what they're getting into, you know. you. Um, and I called this wise old priest to say, like, okay, what do I do in this circumstance? They're older. Um, and he says, you let, you let them teach you about marriage. <laughs> right? So we had one meeting, and I talked to them about that. They knew what they were up to. They knew what they were in. They, it, uh, so from this, then, we get together after the marriage blessing, and we're there, and then their kids show up. And then they had a niece, I think it was a, a niece that was also there, right? And most of the family is in difficult circumstances, right? Or in, I don't know. From that then comes the next stage. And then from that comes the desire that the one gal wants to get her kid baptized. And so then we come and we say, okay, well, this is what we're doing here for the baptism, and this is how we're going to do this, and uh, okay, marriage, and are you interested in get, you know, getting your marriage in the church? It's like... It just unravels, it just grows. But it grows because there's a presence that they're adhering to. But the presence sometimes isn't there because the people don't know they're in need. Or because there's actually no real presence in the people and someone desperately has this need that's opening up and you aren't gonna bring that to a place in which you feel like you're gonna get kicked. And this is what had happened to them before, is when they realized they wanted it, they went to the church, and it, I mean, one time, I mean, this is, God forgive, right? Because I can do the same thing. One time they wanted to get it all fixed, and they went there, and the priest didn't show up for the appointment. And he just interpreted, she interpreted that, I guess God doesn't want us. I forget, you know? This is the transmission, though. It's through a real person. It's through us. It's through you. 
right? And for us to realize this, we can say, oh, I've been inviting this person that isn't, they don't see, and we can be, oh, well, maybe they just aren't aware of their need yet. Right? And then maybe God will show us where they're invited, they have a need. Or maybe we can say, oh, I guess, uh, you know, there's lots of reasons people can not want to follow. And just pray for them and continue to be a presence in them. And in time, God overcomes all these things. Right? And with this, what happens? We, in trying to help other people, we become aware that this is our need too. Remember that circle that goes the other way? That we need to grow in starting with God and have it go the other way. And so, what do we need? We need a person. Who do you guys follow? Who do you guys pay attention to? A person. Right? Who, do you know someone that you say, that person somehow helps me stay faithful to God? Because you can't transmit something that you don't have. We can't give to Stacy something that we don't always already possess. And Brianna possessed something already. Brianna was aware of a communion, a place in which she was generated, a place in which her needs were met. And because of that, then, she has this ability to help someone else. And to really, for us to take seriously in this early day of our community as we grow, who is it that I need, right? And uh, we can see, you know, Diane, and, or Debbie, and, and Don, and uh, uh, the McEwens, I think, talked, and Brianna, right? Different people have talked. Well, there's a real community happening. And the more that we're aware of this community, the more that we're in this community, we more realize, you know what? We're all just a bunch of uh, uh, dodo birds. <laughs> We all just are a bunch of people that have our head in the sand sometimes. And the more we get to know each other, the more we realize, wow, they're kind of broken. I thought they had it all together, but they're really in need. And this is when we discover, but the Spirit somehow is present here.